All right, guys. I want to apologize. Apparently, we're we were playing five rounds of Swiss today, so we're here in Swiss round number five. Yeah. So Matt just... J versus Austin. Uh, these are two three ones. Uh, based on how the tournament's actually going, though, both of these players are guaranteed because we will have all X twos and cut and some X threes in cut. So. Uh... But jumping into the game, uh, we got Austin, who's going to be on the show. Guess what we got? We got more rain, Metagross. <laughs> yeah, so there we see, um, again, we see that Metagross, Tapu Lele, um, Psychic Spam, accompanied by Hydreigon, Ferrothorn, Politoed, and Ludicolo. Um, on Matt's side of the field, we're going to have Porygon Z, Tapu Lele, Tyranitar, uh, Salazzle, Zapdos, and Exadrill. So... We've got opposing weathers here, um, which could be interesting. Watching these players try to uh, fight for terrain, or not terrain, uh, weather control, you know, to let their um, swift swim or sand rush abuser uh, mm -hmm. have the advantage. We've got opposing Tapu Lele's. Um... I actually think an important Pokemon in this matchup is going to be that Salazzle for Matt. Because, of course, you're threatening that Lele Gross combo with fire and poison moves. I'm actually going to be interested to see what this T-Tar is as well. There's no on Matt's team beside it. So that's even more like in his advantage for the Rain Mirror. Because, right, for setting the, uh, you know, resetting Sand by Mega yeah, Evolving. Because uh, Politoed is typically run bulkier, so it might be under... But, of course, Mega Tyranitar's ability is all... So you just get get to reset that right away. We actually Boys. do see that sand mode come out with that Tyranitar and Exadrill versus Tapu Lele and Ferrothorn. You actually see that Lele Psychic Terrain first. Of course, that's pretty typical. Tapu Lele is much faster than Tyranitar naturally. Right. Tapu Lele hits 95 for its base speed and Tyranitar only 61. So um, not super surprising, but it does show us that that's not a Scarf Tyranitar, which is something mm -hmm. we have seen before. So this type oh. of Lele is going to be really threatened by Exadrill right away because Exadrill is going to have, you know, double speed thanks to Sandstream and be able to hit Tapu Lele with a super effective, like, Iron Head. Um, however, neither of Matt's Pokemon are going to be able to deal a ton of damage to this uh, Ferrothorn, um, barring, like, a low kick or super power. Mm, this is a good switch in from Austin. Getting that Palitoed in, just turning off that Sand, and, of course, absorbing this Iron Head from Exadrill. Not going to do a lot of damage. Right, so that's a not very effective hit. As Tyranitar goes for the Rock Slide, um, just going to get good neutral damage on that Politoed and, uh, you know, a little bit of chip on Ferrothorn. But he does get the flinch, so for those of you playing along at home, go ahead and take a shot. Um... <laughs> of course, that's actually a pretty big flinch because just Gyro Gold for power with that T-Tar for a lot of damage. Right, so... Probably wouldn't have KO'd because T-Tar is naturally... But... Would have been in range for like a Politoed skull. There's just anything in the back to just hit it, and T-Tar would have been knocked out more than likely. And this Rock Slide did deal a lot of damage to Politoed, potentially putting it in range for a knockout. As now we do see -tar. Tyranitar go for the Mega off. Evolution. Um, so that's a well timed Mega Evolution on Matt's part. Um, you know, baiting out that Politoed, you know, so it's going to be stuck on the field in sand rather than in rain. Mm -hmm. um, we actually see Exadrill Protect here. Just more than likely, they're just checking for a choice card for Politoed. Not wanting to take a Scald if it doesn't have to. And Tyranitar goes for the rock side, picks up the Kid. And of course, getting that ship on Ferrothorn, will we see a flinch? We do. All right, so another <laughs> flinch. Um, Ferrothorn is not having a good time right now. Yeah, so Tyranitar really pulling its weight here, um, picking up the KO on Politoed. Um, taking away the sand or the potential for a rain mode completely um, for the rest of this game, as well as flinching Ferrothorn twice. That's going to be huge. So Metagross comes in. Uh, Metagross again is going to be threatened by Exadrill um, due to Exadrill carrying like a potentially Groundium Z or even just a Drill Run to be able to hit that slot. Um, so Metagross goes ahead and protects, not wanting to take this full damage, and we do see the ground Z-move dance coming out. So we're going to see this Tectonic Rage, and uh, it's going to be interesting seeing which slot this attack goes into. I'm going to be assuming this is going into Metagross, because of course just picking up the one-hit knockout there. 
But I'm For actually sure. interested about why Austin didn't mega evolve their mega mega physical defense. And as a result, it would make this Tectonic Rage do a lot less damage. Yeah, so even through Protect, that, uh... I just see Super Power from Titar. It's kind of... Fair Throne's gonna hang on with... Just so three HP. Be able to get an attack off. If it's able... We do see Gyro Ball on the T Tyranitar. And it is not gonna be able to pick Gyro up the Ball is touch. just barely not enough like, to pick up one the hit hit point. So now, um, Metagross is in a really strong position. With its Earthquake, it could potentially pick up a double KO. Um, however, if it's not running Earthquake, if it instead has Drill Run, it's gonna have to pick which target it goes for. Yeah, very. This is a really still a really good spot for Matt. Just not like Ferrothorn that weekend. Just Excadrill is just gonna be able to clean up this game more than likely. Like he said, an Earthquake yeah. here could pick up a KO. Drill Run will pick up a KO, and you can just slide pick up K KO or Ferrothorn. And it is you really switch out. You you could even switch out to Rain Sand for later if you really wanted to. It is Actually, really interesting here. So still no Mega from Metagross. We do see Drill do... Run come out. I'm gonna pick up the KO there. I do wonder if maybe he's not carrying the Mega. Um, although I don't recall seeing another uh, Mega on his team, so maybe he just wants to preserve that information if he like. Metagross isn't going to be able to deal a whole lot of damage anyways. Mm. So this just forces Lele to come back in. It's pretty easy. Iron Head and Superpower. Uh, really the commanding game by Matt. Right, Matt. so this is where you see that this uh, Sand Mode is just extremely powerful. Exodrill threatens so many Pokemon in the metagame right now. And uh, even Ferrothorn, which is a fairly solid check to these two, um, just isn't able to deal enough because even after the superpower um, lowered the defense of Tyranitar, the Gyro Ball wasn't able to deal enough damage to pick up the one-hit KO. Mm -hmm. um, so Ferrothorn being, you know, just not quite enough, it does get the Revenge KO on Tyranitar with the Iron Barbs, but that is going to be the game for Matt. So what do you think that uh, Austin's going to have to do in game two to respond to that lead? Because this game really was just really one-sided. I mean, the big thing, like, okay, this game actually could have been played out really differently if, well, if the Mega, if the Metagross is Mega. Because the one thing, like, the game, in my opinion, complete, like, I said this a lot, the game flipped on turn two when he saved the Mega on T-Tar. Because Austin, his game plan was, I'm going to turn this sand off and then just make this extra drill slow again. And that was probably his game plan to win. This is not essentially KOing it, like stomping tantrum or hammer arm. So you got to find a way to get this weather in your control because TSR extra drill just ran through you that game. Yeah, Ferrothor being flinched didn't help. And I think that could have potentially changed the game a lot. But letting Politoed go down that early and and three, just let Excadrill run rampant. So you gotta find a way to just prevent that. Get this weather in your favor, and just you can't just having more answers to the sand mode. Just gonna have to be. It's just gonna have to happen, in my opinion. So yeah, so that's through action, and we don't see another mega. So what me that's actually mega evolving. Meta I think of what he could even do. Like I'm thinking of potential, like maybe try Metagross Ludicolo, if I potentially like where you can just like fake out. Meta, you, you have like the fake out pressure. I don't know. I don't see a lot of answers for the sand. Like the sand mode plus. Sand. It's just something that Austin seems to have a really tough time dealing with. Right. So if he can, you know, if he can get himself in a position where um, he's able to use the rain against the sand, um, you know, and keep rain up somehow, that'll be um, a good spot to be in because that's a lazzle, um, really threatening to that Ferrothorn, which is the main check to the sand team. Um, and of course, Ferrothorn, you know, not flinching could allow it to KO that uh, Exadrill a little, or not Exadrill, Tyranitar a little sooner, um, which could be part of the key as well. Mm -hmm. So Matt was there, Matt was the one that was taking more of the just to see if, he, like, based off that game one, you wouldn't, you would, 
the one adjusting, but maybe just wanting to check, just like think out all of his options in case that Austin does, it's like all the potential adjustments Austin could make here. And we actually do see him switch it up. So, so we do see here. So Matt probably just identifying that that Barrowthorn game one was not something he wanted to deal with at all. Mm -hmm. So getting Salazar out there makes sense. However, you get Politoed Ludicolo out here turn one. And that's and it's in a really good position, of course. Salazar can't be faking out, and neither can Ludicolo because of psychic turn. And Ludicolo, once again, has its pick of the litter. It can knock out either of these with a hydro. Salazo is known to carry focus at thing to note. Or you could just protect Top Lele here and just sludge bomb Ludicolo. Right. Now, I wouldn't be too surprised to see that Salazzle isn't uh, carrying the Focus Sash, given that it's on a Sand Team, um, but I'm immediately going to eat my word. Yeah, we do see that Focus Sash, and we actually see Thunderbolt coming out from Tapu Lele. Yeah, so that's a, a little bit of an interesting play, um, because a Psychic move in terrain is going to deal more damage that a, a neutral psychic move in terrain is going to deal more damage than a super effective non-stab electric move. Um, Thunderbolt, oh, not a move. That was a smart double in to that Salazzle. With the yeah, to Polytone. make sure, you know, oh, if this is... Uh, if this is Scarf, I'm going to pick up the KO. If it's not, then I'll get the KO and still get damage. Um... Took a lot of damage though on both. Like he's, but he took a lot to get that single knockout on a Pokemon that only checks the Ferrothorn. And now your rate E to beating this Tyranitar is really weakened. And based off the damage Titar is doing last turn, there is nothing stopping uh, Matt from just Thunderbolting the Ludicolo and just rock sliding again. Yeah, like, the rock slide is going to deal a ton of damage to that. And uh, we did see last game that Tyranitar was faster. Than, um, yeah. So it is going to be dealing a lot of damage. So Austin trying to preserve that uh, rain mode by switching out the Politoed. Um, Ludicolo taking a... Based off the oh, damage no. that Ludicolo has taken, the... that Sludge one is alarmingly little damage. I would not be... Especially considering the, like that turn one... Like, Hydro Vortex has to be in your mind of a play to make. Right, so, so I wouldn't be surprised. I definitely think you're, uh... But your assumption there is probably correct, given the damage from that Sludge Bomb effective stab attack. Um, not dealing as much damage as we would normally expect. When you get Hydreigon in here, and this is a real... This is a good, sw this is a good mod to have here for Austin, because... Not really a lot of. There's really no switch ins for Dark Tier. Right. Hydreigon is going to be able to deal neutral damage to Tapu Lele. Tyranitar is already on the field, so Matt doesn't have the opportunity to switch that in as a Dark Resist. And mm -hmm. since Steel doesn't resist Dark um, as of Generation 6, you know, even that extra drill is going to take a ton of damage from the Hydreigon. And of course, um, Tyranitar is packing superpower. However, there's this Metagross on the field, just right there, Tyranitar with a Meteor Mash. We actually see a full para of Paralysis from the Thunderbolt. We get a... Yeah, it is a Dark Kinium Z. Black yeah, so this uh, Black Hole Eclipse, Eclipse is going to be dealing a massive, massive damage into the Tapu Lele. And um, we do see that, that Metagross has chosen not to Mega Evolve again, so I definitely think that maybe uh, Austin just isn't carrying it right now. Yeah, I think we might be see something where... Austin does not have the Z-Cross on. Full para on Metagross. It's yeah, like so that... Crunch off onto it. That, that full para is really unfortunate because um, there could have been an opportunity for Metagross to pick up a ton of damage onto either one of these Pokemon that Matt has. Um, and however, just dealing no damage and getting KO'd for its trouble. So Hydreigon has now popped its Z-Move, so it's not going to be able to do that again. Uh, however, it is faster than the Exadrill. Um, so it could potentially like fire off an Earth Power if it's carrying that into that slot. Um, and we have seen that Tapu Lele is faster than both Pokemon that Austin has, so he's in a little bit of a tight spot here. Um, 
Let's also raise the question from that side here. Is it actually or not? Because if you turn on the sand, you're gonna knock out your Layla this turn, which might not honestly be that big of a deal. Or you can just Thunderbolt Polytope. Like you have a very safe, yeah, Mega Evolve here. Like you're gonna be killing your own Layla, but you're. And you've got to imagine he's got that extra drill in the back, so yeah, that in, uh, to finish up the game. And this is a pretty also this is a pretty free superpower on Hydreigon. It's actually gonna protect here, which is smart. Not wanting to take that. And Tyranitar is actually gonna protect too. So if this Polito protects, Lele could be going down. It does. Protect. So top of Lele, gonna get knocked out here by the Sandstorm. And Excadrill more than likely going to be coming into the back. So we're going to have to see if that is indeed the case, Hydreigon. <clears throat> Taking that Sandstorm damage as is Politoed. Um, Based off that health, Politoed could potentially be getting a berry here. Uh, we see Excadrill come in. And, of course, Excadrill, we saw that it has that ground. So Tectonic Rage here. Will be able to pick up the KO on Politoed. I think it would get it through a double protect. If it gets if Politoed gets a double, I don't think that KOs will be close to C. This is also gonna be big to where we have, we're gonna find out if Hydreigon has power here. Seeing that it right. didn't go for it last turn, I don't know if it has it. I don't even know if this KO is Tyranitar in the first place. Because Mega Tyranitar is just really bulky. That Mega giving it a giving it even more special defense on top of the Sandstorm boost it has. We do just see this ground EMZ come out. Probably right. gonna we see no protect, protect, so ground EMZ going into Polito, that's going to be enough to, to KO. And then uh, Tyranitar is just going to be free to superpower into this Hydreigon slot, which is going to deal a ton of damage. All right, Polito getting dragged down by this extra drill. Going to be easily picking up the KO here. Polito goes down. Guess we're going to have to see, is this Hydreigon pass? She goes for a Tailwind. So, revealing that he does indeed have Tailwind, which is a rock. So safe. Just, it's not wanting to just superpower quite yet. But, Hydreigon now is the fastest thing on the. This could potentially be big, actually. Yeah, yeah. so, um, that Tailwind. It's carrying Earth Power, though, if it does wants to give be. it the opportunity to come back, um, but it's got to have Earth Power in order to take out this Tyranitar before it takes that big, close, mm -hmm. uh, superpower, rather. Um, so extra goes for the protect. protect. So if this is an Earth Power in, could pull it back. I'm actually Draco making the call, targeting this Tyranitar. Is it going to be able to pick up the KO? It does it's not. just not quite enough damage. And superpower comes out from Tyranitar. So that was... The right call. That was a good call there from from Austin. That game still would have come down to some to some flinch and some RNG because of yeah, course after mean, that you're you're just hoping for Dark Pulse flinches on Excadrill. Austin definitely played to his outs yeah. there. You know, if Draco Meteor is the most powerful move he has to into that uh, Tyranitar slot, you know, getting that Tailwind up was huge. And, uh, you know, if he could have picked up the KO and then gone for some crits and flinches, um, he was playing to his outs, and you always got to respect that. But that was just a very, very well-played game um, on Matt's end. You know, all credit to Austin playing the best he could in the situation, but I just wasn't there for him. Um, that sand mode just being too strong for the, uh, the rain team that Austin was running. This is a, this is a matchup. We, both, we know both of these players were already in cut. This is a matchup I'd really be interested in watching. The adjustments he made in game two were ones that were actually going to be putting him in a winning position. Because if you remember, there was the there was the Thunderbolt para full para on the Metagross that turned the right. was going for the knockout on a Tyranitar. And if it got that knockout, Lele would have knocked itself out the next turn. And then you have Excadrill 1v2 versus Politoed and Hydreigon. And I don't really know if it... Extra drill would have been capable of winning that. Right. So that was so, a really unfortunate, uh, yeah. you know, RNG thing. 10% chance to paralyze, uh, one in four chance to be full para. Um, you know, that just really sucks. Um, unfortunate to see it happen. But 
Austin is, you know, potentially going to get another chance because he's going to be 3-2 um, with a top eight cut. So he's going to have a chance to play again and, you know, see if maybe with more games that luck evens out a little bit. So I'm really excited um, to see how far he goes in top cut as well. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us in round five here at the Game Cafe. We will actually be back with Cut the next time we see you again, so stay tuned. Oh, no. We're uh, we're going to round six of Swiss now. <laughs> Please go. All right.